Hello fellow gamers, and welcome to another episode of The Gaming Frontier. My name's Chase. And I'm Chris. And this week, we close the curtain on April's set of releases and prepare to welcome in an exciting month of summer releases in May 2016. Hello ladies and gents, and we're back again with a whole host of gamey goodness for you to get your hands on this week. Kicking off the 26th of April, we have Alienation, a twin stick shooter that was originally slated to be released back in March, finally making its way over to your PS4 systems. So grab your buds, grab some guns, and get ready to blast some aliens. If you fancy taking your time over your decision making, Battle World Kronos may be the game for you. A strategy in the same vein as Advance Wars and previously released on PC systems back in 2013, this will be making its next gen debut on PS4 and Xbox One. If you're looking for an action heavy RPG game after Dark Souls 3, you can pick up what the developers are calling a mix between Wind Waker and Dark Souls on PC, Mac and Linux in the form of Cornerstone, the Song of Tyrim. Now if your fancy suit and red tie has been stuck in your closet for a little too long, it may just be time to dust it off and give those silver ballers a polish, as you'll be suiting up to hit the sun-soaked beachfront of Sapienza in Hitman Episode 2. People that have been enjoying a more story focused game may be playing the new King's Quest reboot, and you'll be glad to hear that if you're one of those, the third episode, Once Upon a Climb, will be making its way over to PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. And for the final title from me, before I pass you off to Jason for the rest of the 26th, we have Lumo, an action adventure puzzler that will have you darting and diving through all manner of traps. Lumo will be traversing its way to PC, OS X and Linux. Bear with us a little longer as we continue with the releases for the 26th. Coming to iOS and Android is Pathfinder Adventures, an RPG inspired trading card game making its debut as a video game. Following on from their successful Guacamelee, Drinkbox Studios is bringing another vibrant colourful title in the form of Severed, a first person RPG adventure coming exclusively to PS Vita. And finally, closing out the 26th as well as the Walking Dead Michonne miniseries is the final episode, Episode 3, What We Deserve. This is the grand finale to the free episode miniseries and will be available on PC, PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360 and mobile devices. On to the 28th of April, we see a couple new free to play titles coming to Nintendo consoles. Announced back at E3 last year in 2015, Lost Reavers, an online cooperative action adventure, will have you duke it out with monsters and traverse trap filled levels on the Wii U. Looking to take your amiibos a step further? You're in luck as Nintendo are releasing Mini Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge, coming to Wii U and new 3DS systems. Having made its way to Xbox One a couple weeks ago, on April 29th we finally see Stranger of Swords City, coming to a more portable platform, the PS Vita. And that concludes the summary of releases for this week. This week I'm going to be sticking with the indie for my top pick, as I look towards a game that was successfully kickstarted and will be available soon on Steam. Cornerstone The Song of Tyrim is an action adventure RPG fantasy epic brought to you by Ascension Games. You take on the role of Tyrim, who is determined to uncover the mysteries of Nygaard by crafting and battling his way through all manner of perils and adventures. One of the reasons this game caught my eye is due to the claim on the Kickstarter page that this was a wonderful blend of both Windwalker and Dark Souls. Now, I'm sure you'll agree with me here, but that's a pretty big legacy to compare up to. You've got some pretty big shoes to fill, so I felt it was only proper that I get a good look at this game and see what you know what's coming up with it. Uh, and the game features everything you'd want from an RPG epic. It's got crafting, monsters, tricks and traps whilst you uncover the mystery of the world of Nygaard. And that's not all, as you'll be searching through several islands on your quest, you'll get a few vehicles to pilot. There's a ship, windsurfers, and even a glider. So, all things considered, it's looking like this is going to keep you busy for quite some time. Yeah, and I had a go at the uh, the demo that they've got available on Steam at the moment. And some of the elements that you have mentioned regarding this sort of RPG style, uh, with the crafting and the, and the traps and such, they're, they're at a pretty 
basic level, but you know, it is a demo, so maybe in terms of progression you might see something a bit more complex once you play a bit more of the game. One thing that I quite liked that you mentioned is the, the various vehicles that you can pilot when you go through the game, so that's going to be interesting to see how you sort of explore the world with those vehicles available to you. Yeah, definitely. I think the vehicles is going to be an interesting concept. Not a lot of RPGs give you so much freedom of movement, really. It's usually like land or horses and things like that. Uh, but unfortunately, I haven't had time to get round to the demo myself. But probably bet I'm going to be giving it a good try before this comes out, just to see how all these systems marry together, really. And if it really is worthy of being compared to titles such as Wind Waker and Dark Souls. After all, like I said before, they are pretty big shoes to fill. Well, if you've had a chance to take a look at this game in the past, then the main thing that will definitely stand out to you is that this game looks very much like Wind Waker. It's really hard to argue against it. Everything from the ship and the little effects on like the water and the torches, they all seem a little familiar, and to be fair, it does look gorgeous as a result. If you're worried that this may have an effect on the indoorsy parts of the game, such as your caves and dungeons, don't fear about that. They're still looking dark and dingy as you'll be trolling around in there. And on the outside of things, each island is looking to have its own personality, making sure that each location will have something to remember it by. Yeah, I quite like the uh, the way that the game presents itself. It definitely does remind me and anyone else who's played Wind Waker that it, it's just basically the PC version of a <laughs> Zelda game. But really, because it's it got funded under Kickstarter, it might not have had a big enough budget. The game does bit. look like Wind Waker, but the visuals in, in terms of quality are there are a few sort of lackluster components to it you know the some of the animations are a bit still and you know some of the frames are lost when when you're transitioning from a climbing animation to just general walking i mean the only exposure i've had of the game is through the demo so hopefully the final product will go beyond what i've seen so far yeah i mean i hope so the game doesn't like it's got some promise especially with the crafting system and the vehicles and like you say you know it was a demo like we don't really know when when that was updated, if it's updated at all, so it's going to be interesting to see if they've come come across from that. And like we said before, game also claims to be as difficult as Dark Souls, so if they manage to match it up with the beauty of Wind Waker all in one, whilst it's quite a claim, I'm definitely excited to see it come to life. This could be a game you pick up for a quick half hour hour and end up spending your whole night on it. If Cornerstone's taking your fancy and you want to add a bit of crafting into your Dark Souls, then there is a free demo available as we mentioned before. Uh, otherwise, Cornerstone's Song of Tyrim will be releasing for PC on the 26th of April. My top pick this week finally sees a PS Vita title get some much needed attention. Severed, a game brought to you by the same creators that developed Guacamelee, will have you slashing through waves of monsters in a vibrant colourful landscape. Using the unique gesture controls of the PS Vita, Drinkbox Studios are hoping to get people back on the stylish portable gaming device that propelled their previous title, Guacamelee, into the spotlight. So in Severed, you play as Sasha, a one-armed warrior that is trying to piece together fragments of her past as well as her future. To do this, you fight monsters through a fantastical world, their words, not mine, solve puzzles and unlock abilities that will aid in your adventure. The control scheme, as mentioned, uses the touch controls of the Vita, allowing you, the player, to take down your enemies with a swish of a finger. So initially when you mentioned this game to me and I started having a look into it, I thought it was going to be quite a linear progression, you know, the first trailer I saw it was literally bouncing from uh, enemy to enemy, but uh, as I went more in depth and had a quick look around, you know, uh, I noticed that the game actually, it plays like a, like an old school dungeon crawler, uh, Legend of Grimrock if you played that, or uh, Etrian Odyssey I believe plays in a similar manner, so uh, there'll be a lot of choice in there, maybe there'll be some multiple paths as well. My main concern for this game really is honestly going to be that touch control system. From looking at the way the battles work, it reminds me very much of Fruit Ninja, now if that's offensive to them I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but from what I saw in the trailers, again, it did seem like a lot of enemies were taken down just from, you know, just swishing your fingers across the screen quite quickly. So 
Hopefully they can add a, an interesting dynamic in there where there's certain weak points that get exposed or certain parts of an enemy you have to hit uh, so that it isn't quite as easy as it first looks. I mean looking at the progression system in the game, you know, you've got different paths that you can go down to gain new abilities and skills. I mean the the difficulty could just stem from that, you know, you've got, to, you've got to use various abilities to take down foes. It could be in the form of how House of the Dead handles weak points as well. Uh, in the fact that they just chuck so much at you that you've got to just micromanage as much as you can in a, a rail shooter. That's just that's just crazy. But, you know, you've got your elements of traditional RPGs in there, so hopefully the difficulty of the game comes from the enemies that you fight or, or the puzzles that you solve and not from how easy the game in general will feel. So yes, we're back with another week where I talk about the graphics of another game. Yeah, I really do enjoy the bright and vivid colours that Drinkbox Studios have used for their latest title, and to be honest, it really does give the world that Severed presents to the player a distinct feel of chaos and mayhem. But one thing that I really wanted to take a look at was the monster designs that they've got in this game. Uh, they look really grotesque, but with the combination of the colours you're sort of tied between are they cute? <laughs> or are they, you know, trying to kill, well, rip out your guts and everything. It just makes the game stand out. Uh, I think having seen the same monsters as you, I don't think I'd quite call them cute. So. <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm not here to rag on you for uh, going on the visuals again. That seems to be something that you know we both like picking up on. It does help a game quite a lot, and definitely in the case of Severed, I can see the influences that they've taken from their previous title, Guacamole. That was also quite vivid and quite brightly coloured, and again, it brought the world to life. Like you said, it's good that they've managed to keep that. And one thought I just had uh, recently was that some of the monster designs kind of remind me of Samurai Jack. Maybe there's some influence there in that, but uh, one thing you didn't mention, and I think it's kind of a crime to not mention, is the soundtrack for the game. Uh, I watched the two trailers and fell in love with the damn thing that I went out and found the album on Spotify and listened to it straight <laughs> away. So, uh, you know, if, if you're not gonna, if you're gonna mention the visuals, you've gotta mention the soundtrack as well, because that's definitely, especially in the case of this game, it's tying the whole thing together and suits the game so well. You know, I do commit crimes every every week <laughs> that we do these videos. You know, it's it's just it seems to be the theme apparently. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely the soundtrack and the visuals tied together really well to present the world of Severed. You know, I think the player's going to be always engaged with what Sasha sort of encounters in the world. And really, all elements of the design, from the soundtracks to the visuals, help to create an engaging world for the player. All in all, Severed looks like a neat little title that will hopefully get players excited to pick up their PS Vitas again. So ready those deadly fingers as Severed will be coming exclusively to PS Vita on the 26th of April. Alright then folks, unfortunately that's all the time we've got for this week and I hope that you've enjoyed seeing through the month of April with us. As always, if there are any titles we've missed, we'll be covering them on our Facebook slash TG Frontier or giving a quick shout out on our Twitter at TG Frontier, so please do keep an eye on those. And if you've noticed something that we may have missed, let us know in the comments and we'll include it in the Writer Planar blog, and if you like what we're doing, be sure to give us a like and a subscribe for future updates. If you have any comments on how we can improve or even the format of the show, please do leave us a message below and we'll definitely get back to you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.